Hi everyone, Taya here from Quilting Delights and we are back with another fun project for you to consider sewing in your sewing room. I wanted to share this with you because I do a lot of knitting and crocheting in the evenings. Um, it's a good way for me to spend time with my husband. But we have a cat and three dogs and when the balls of yarn come out they go everywhere and I have a hard time containing them. So I had some leftover rope from some uh, rope bowls that I had made in prior years and I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity to share how to make these. They're fast, fun, easy projects. There's lots of information out about them, how to make them um, on YouTube and on the internet, but I wanted to give you just my take on how to make them and hopefully you can make some too. You can use these for anything. You can use them for fruit um, or vegetables or whatever you want sitting on your table. They're great for decoration. I've got some decorative ones that I have sitting on shelves, but mostly I just use them for utility purposes uh, to, contain, um, to contain my yarn. So here's an example of a couple different styles. This one has handles on it and we used one and a quarter inch strips of fabric. This one also uses one and a quarter inch strip of fabrics and has a button on the outside. This one we glued a button to. And this one, I just took, uh, I didn't even use fabric strips. I just took the, the rope, the natural rope, and I used a variegated thread. And when I was done, I just tied off the ends here. And this is perfect for holding one or two balls of yarn when I'm knitting or crocheting. Okay, let's get down to brass tacks on what we need and how to get these made. Okay, so we are here at our sewing machines getting ready to put one of these bowls together. Now I didn't mention you can also do uh, placemats, you can do coasters, you can do any kind of flat project that you want, but we're going to focus today on doing curved projects and how to get them in different shapes and different sizes. We're going to work with um, multi-purpose clothesline is what it's called. Um, but really what it is is braided cotton and you can find it in lots of different sizes. This I happen to buy at the, wear, at the uh, hardware store and it's a nice rope. Um, it's a little bit stiffer than I like to work with and it is seven and seven thirty seconds of an inch thick. It is also 50 feet long. 50 feet will get you one large bowl or two medium sized bowls and so 50 feet is a good measurement to work with. Now what we like to do is I have a company that we purchase our braided cotton from and I like it because it's a little bit more pliable and instead of 7 30 seconds it's 3 16 so it's just a hair narrower than the clothesline that you would buy at the hardware store. This is a really nice weight and the first thing I do when I pull my um, clothesline out is I roll it up into a ball because then it's easier to work with. The one thing that you're going to want to remember is that it needs to flow clockwise. It needs to flow clockwise so when you're spinning it and turning it and doing your cut, or doing your um, sewing, as you go to turn it up you can see that that uh, clothesline needs to come in from the bottom on the right hand side. Okay, now the biggest mystery to me was always how do you start, um, how do you start these? So what I learned, um, and I learned this from several different people, and it's why I love doing this so much because now that I figured out how to do it, um, I want to do it all the time. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to wind the center of this as tight as you can. Now some people leave a piece of tape on. I don't like that. I like mine to be, in fact here I'll just take it out. Um, I like mine to be clean cut. And I'm going to cut it right now and show you what I'm talking about. So you want to have a nice clean cut with no threads hanging out, no none of the cotton threads hanging out. Now the particular kind of rope that we use here is 100% cotton and the company that we source it from makes this in the United States. So we like that it's a made in the USA product. And you can see, I'm going to roll it super tight, as tight as I can, and you just keep, keep that center part really, really, really tight. When you have about four rounds, when you have about four rounds, I always thought, how on earth do you sew this so that it stays put? But it really does work. And the trick is to keep it wound really tight in the middle. Okay, so now I'm going to take these 
quilting pins. And I want to make sure that you're not using your little glass head pins. They're not strong enough. This is a quilting pin. It's longer and the shaft of the pin is thicker. So you just pick a spot and we're just going to pin through all the layers. doesn't take any effort whatsoever. And you're just going to pin to the center. Then we're going to go across to the other side and we're going to pin to the center. And then we're going to do it on the third side. And what this is doing is it's keeping them flat and together so that we can sew. And then here's my fourth side. And we're actually going to sew with the pins in your, in your rope, but we're not going to sew over them. You don't ever want to sew over your pins, but especially you don't want to sew over quilting pins because they're so thick, they're so much thicker, you would um, take a chance on hurting your sewing machine. So I'm just going to clean up any little threads that I have here to make this nice and tidy. And then um, I want to talk to you about threads. Okay. So we're all good there. Now, you don't want to just grab whatever thread you have available in your sewing room. These are, these are going to be very sturdy. And the way we make them very sturdy is we use a sturdy thread. So when you're piecing, for example, Aurifil thread is perfect because it's a lightweight thread and it's 100% cotton. When you're sewing rope bowls, my sincere recommendation is that you work with a polyester thread but I would also recommend that you make it a flat finish polyester thread. So for example, my favorite go-to thread is Superior and I like their Omni thread, which we use for quilting. But the reason I like it is because it's a flat finish and whether you're working with the Omni solid or the Omni variegated, both of them are absolutely fabulous. Um, just a real top-notch thread for this kind of project or for machine quilting. So their variegated come in a multitude of colors. We're going to be working today. Um, you can see we've done some bowls with fabric and these were done with one and a quarter inch strips that you just put a spot of glue on as you get to the next one. And um, these are perfect for jelly rolls. So if you've got jelly rolls or you've got leftover two and a half inch strips from bindings, for example, you just cut those on the fold and that one and a quarter inch strip is going to be perfect. This is great for using up your scraps and also for doing a specific color. Um, these particular ones we used the Omni thread in purple. So this thread on here is Omni thread in purple. And on today's project what we're going to do is use the Omni thread in cream. It's color number 3004. It's a perfect match for this and um, it's going to look lovely when we're done. I like kind of that organic plain look right now. Um, I've done so much with color that it's actually a little bit refreshing just to do um, the soft color that it comes with. Okay, so we've talked about threads. So you want polyester and in this situation, whatever you have for your top thread, you're also going to have wound in your bobbin. So I've pre-wound a bobbin with this cream Omni thread and we're going to get to work here. So just uh, the next thing that we're going to do, just remember you're going to roll your um, clothesline into a ball. You're going to select your um, thread color that you're going to use. And if you have one, if you have um, a desire to do fabric strips, you're going to do one and a quarter inch strips. And those are just going to get wrapped on as we work here. Okay. Now I have set this up and I want to mark a line because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch across in here. Um, a crosshair, like a cross uh, bullseye crosshair, and that's going to secure all the all the layers. We're going to do that across three of them. We're going to do that across three of them. So I'm just going to draw a line with this is a friction pen, and um, it's not the flattest surface, but it'll give me an idea of where I need to go. And I'm going to go across three this way, and then I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to go across three this way. One, two, three. Now notice that we wound this past three uh, because we need a fourth one. We need a fourth one. And I marked just to the side of my pin. We need, oh, I better put my bobbin in and thread my machine. Okay, so we have set up the center of our bowl or plate or whatever it is you're going to be making. We've set that up. 
using a friction pen. We've talked about our threads. I have my machine threaded with Omni cream color because I'm just doing the rope. I'm not gonna put any fabric on it. And I wanna talk about setting up your machine really quickly. The first thing you wanna make sure of is that you don't have a straight stitch plate or a zero millimeter stitch plate on because we're gonna be doing a zigzag. And I set my zigzag up at 5.5 millimeters wide and 2.0 millimeters in length. So 5.5 width, 2.0 length. I stop always with my needle in the down position, if you have that ability on your machine, because I don't want to um, have it shift on me when I'm turning it and getting ready for the next um, step. Okay, so that's how you're gonna set it up. Now, for the first part of this though, we're going to just do a straight line and so I will reset that here in just a second. And remember I said we're going to go from the third one to the third one. So I'm going to put my foot down. And I'm going to pull that pin. Because remember we're not sewing over any pins. And I'm going to slowly go forward until I get to the middle. And now I'm going to pull that pin out that is pointing at me. And then when I hit that third loop, you don't want to stitch the one that is at the outside edge. Now I'm just going to back tack. I'm going to sew this four times. Here's number three. And we're going to trim that and we're going to do exactly the same thing the other direction. Okay, so our setup is done and you can see that's nice and secure and nice and solid. So now I'm gonna switch my machine over to zigzag and like I said, I'm gonna make it 5.5 wide and 2.0 long. That's the measurement that I like. Uh, remember, it's also important that you have your ball of clothesline on the right side so that it feeds and allows you to fold that bowl up when you're ready to do that. We're gonna start close to the center and just kind of go around in circles a little bit. And I've used a foot, this is a number three foot, it's actually a buttonhole foot, but what I like about it is it has a um, guide on the front that tells me where I am between the two pieces of rope. So it's easy for me, easier for me to follow that along the edge than it is to follow um, a straight, a regular number one foot. You're gonna be turning fairly fast and tight when we get started with this. And here we go. I'm gonna stitch this out to about six inches. That's the right size for the base of a bowl that will hold my balls of yarn. But if you wanted to make a bigger one like this one here, this one we stitched out to eight inches before we started turning. And you can make this bowl easily with 50 feet of clothesline. And I'm going to be able to make at least two of these smaller bowls, and I might have enough left over for a coaster when I'm done. So I'm just going to start feeding this. Uh, notice I hold it with my left uh, pinky, and then I'm using my right hand to pull that tight and keep it, um, keep it close to the rope. We want these to be super tight. And here we go.
So now we have the base. It's about six inches wide, which is what I want. And my ball of um, clothesline fell to the ground and it is actually working nicely to pull, put a little tension behind here. You wanna make sure, um, one of the things I want you to notice is that when you're sewing these, we always have one layer around the outside past where we're sewing. And you have to have that. You can see here by looking at it, we need to have material on our feed dogs to help feed that through. So it's important. I'm sewing, I'm actually sewing the, these two together and this is on the outside coming around the next turn when we come back. Now, to get this to roll up, now we're gonna start holding, you're gonna bend it just a little bit and we're gonna start holding and pulling the cording a little bit tighter as we go. And that's gonna help make that turn. And as soon as we make the turn, we don't need the extra round of rope anymore because now it's pushing it onto the feed dogs as we make it roll. So I'm just gonna undo this part here. And now that the flat part is done, we're gonna work on the turn and we just need the two pieces of rope that we're sewing together. You can see it starts bending up. So I'm pushing with my left hand and I'm pulling with my right hand and that tension is making it turn. Okay, our rope bowl is almost done here. I'm gonna go until I have about six inches left at the end, but I wanna share with you a couple of ways that you can end these. So for example, if you look here and you can see the front, this one comes off. So we're gonna double sew back tack across the edge here. And then you can just curl this down and around and sew it down or hot glue gun it down. I think this one I sewed down and then we sewed the button on it. Same thing on the other one. I sewed to this point and uh, left six or eight inches and then just curled that back around and put a button on the outside of it too. Um, I also want you to notice that you can put handles in just by stretching it out and leaving a gap and then picking up and sewing at the other end. So this is an example of a handle that you can actually pick this basket up. These bowls and rope projects are wonderful, absolutely easy projects to do. If you're looking for a hostess gift and you've got a short amount of time to get one made, I can guarantee you that anybody you bring these to is gonna enjoy and love them. They're great for selling at craft shows. They're great for containment because everything in our house is about containment. I've got shorter ones that I put my sewing supplies on and then it slides right underneath my table. Um, but they're just wonderful as gifts. They're wonderful for selling at craft fairs and they're wonderful for containing all of your items that are running amok in your house on your counters. One thing I forgot to mention at the beginning is you definitely want to use a size 90-14 needle. That's important. 
and you need to wind lots of bobbins. This is a Bernina 780, and I just went through two of the uh, jumbo size bobbins on this particular bowl. So I'll finish this one up. Oh, the other thing I forgot to show you was on my bowl that is holding my balls of yarn, what I did was I just uh, tack, back tacked at the edge here and then left a little bit and un unwound or unbraided the cotton, tied them in little knots, and it makes a nice little uh, finishing touch there. That's what I'm going to do with this one. But make sure when you do that that you leave enough at the end to actually tie a knot. My suggestion is you tie the knot first and then sew up to it. I had a lot of trouble with this one because I didn't leave enough rope to hang myself with <laughs> um, to do this. And so the lesson there is make it long enough. So I'm, I'm actually making my knot right now. And I will unbraid all of this and leave it loose like I did on this one. So now I'm going to sew up to the knot and back tack and it'll be perfect. One little thing I wanted to mention, and everybody does it, is when you are sewing these, you're going to have a space like here. I missed I missed sewing that seam together. The nice part about these projects is you just go back in and you sew over it again. So I've got two spots that I know. One is right here. One is right here. And I will go back and sew those down. The beauty of doing the natural with the natural cream colored thread is you're never going to see that. You can see on my variegated one where I missed a couple spots. And I just went back over and sewed those. But that adds a little bit of character to the project. So I hope you've enjoyed our time together here today. Remember, 50 feet makes two nice-sized bowls. You can finish them off in many decorative ways with buttons, beads, all kinds of things. We will send you the link at the bottom of the YouTube video with where to purchase the rope from our website and a list of supplies and a PDF that explains all of these helpful hints. Thanks for joining us today. We will look forward to seeing you soon. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell on our YouTube channel. Also, you can post on Facebook at Facebook Quilting Delights. We'd love to see the projects that you're working on. And we will be bringing you more. Have a great day.